Hi everybody, it's Mark, C2 Forum member. Wanted to post this quick video on CAN network troubleshooting. Someone had just mentioned on the uh, forum that they had a, a ski, they took it to a local shop. Shop said uh, they have a problem. You know, there were 19 instances of a fault uh, in the CAN network and they wanted to change a wire harness for 1200 and something dollars and then uh, if that doesn't fix it, we'll throw an ECU at it and you know, that's not cheap. So we'll throw an ECU at it and see if that fixes the problem and we'll roll the dice like we're in Vegas and hope we fix your CAN network problem. Really, CAN networks are not that complicated, but you do need some special tools and training. So a quick hat tip to scannerdanner.com, I think I'm gonna mention that in the next section, but uh, the, the guy is really good trainer. He posts a lot of videos for just you know people to learn how to do stuff. He's got a, a website where you can pay a monthly fee and learn how to do diagnostics. And a lot of the diagnostic stuff he teaches, it's, it's all automobile based, but the same technology that's in the cars is also in your CDU, for example, the CAN network. So uh, I'm gonna take a few minutes to, to walk you through some of the connections on where you connect in the ski and then uh, what your waveform should look like on the laptop and how, uh, you know, when you get to the point where you're troubleshooting and you see, if you do see a bad waveform, you simply go to that module and start disconnecting them you know, one by one until your, your waveform returns to what I'm gonna show you is normal, because this ski is in, in normal shape and it doesn't have any malfunctions. There's no faults in the computer. So anyway, uh, with that, let's get started on showing you the connections uh, at the diagnostic connector in the front of the ski. All right. Now before we get started on making the connections, it's really handy to have uh, your CDU manual. So uh, this is a hat tip for uh, uh, bestshopmanuals at gmail.com because uh, uh, if you have a 2010 or newer CDU, you can't get your CDU manual from cdumanuals.net. You got to pay for it. And I think it was $25 for this manual. It's digital PDF file, but it's very handy because it's got the schematic. And if you want to understand your CAN network, uh, let me see, it's under electronic management. So if you click that and you open that up, then you go down to CAN network. And what I wanna show you very quickly is the topography is what they call it in the CAN business. Um, nope, I, I zoomed the wrong way. Let me go this way, minimize that. Zoom in some more so you can see this clearly. So this is the CAN network. So these are all the components on the bus. Okay, now the bus connector where all the wires connect is in the fuse box. So if we come over here and we look, the fuse box on this particular ski is right here. So all the cam wires meet in that box. So you can imagine how important it is to try to keep the water out of here as much as possible and the rest of the hole. Um, even though they have waterproof connectors, water tends to get in there. So this is the can topography uh, for this 2017 CDU. So on the left you see uh, the ECM and then you see uh, the instrument cluster Then there's the diagnostic connector and then the IBR. If you've got the optional depth sounder that would be over here. So what we're doing is we're going to go into, oh, oh, forgot, almost forgot. Uh, what they don't tell you in the three pages, <laughs> CDU didn't give us a lot of information on how the CAN network talks. Um, they did talk about the speed of the network and so if you scroll up, it says, okay, rate of about uh, 10 to 100 milliseconds, uh, depending on the component. So CAN, way com CAN bus communication is two ways. So it's two-way communication. So the ECM can talk to the gauge and the gauge can talk to the ECM. And in like manner, if you've got uh, a CANDU Pro or you've got a BUDS or uh, some diagnostic equipment and you connect to the diagnostic connector, if you're familiar with uh, uh, that type of equipment, you know I can actually connect my buds or my CANDU Pro to the diagnostic connector and I can, for example, turn on the fuel pump or I can activate uh, fuel injectors. Well, that's bi-directional communication. So over the network, I'm sending that signal over the network to the ECM to say, hey, ECM, turn on the fuel injector, turn on the fuel pump. I wanna make sure that thing works right. So at the end of the network, there are two terminating resistors. And I'm gonna show you where those are next. So, at least on the, again, this is, 
your ski may be different and you may have to find these depending on your, your make and model. Now, this cap right here on the diagnostic connector, if the ski is running, you can't run without that connector. On the diagnostic connector, there are two, two uh, well, actually six pins in this connector. Pins one and two are the CAN network. And you'll see I've got T pins in there. And yeah, I know that I may uh, jeopardize the waterproof seal uh, to by back probing in this, but it's the only way to talk to the network because they don't have a breakout box for SeaDoo unless you buy the million dollar SeaDoo part. So anyway, there are two wires, the white beige, which is CAN high, and the bl white black, which is CAN low. So the voltage, on can high is just the same as a car. It's uh, two and a half to three and a half volts. The voltage on the can low is one and a half to two and a half volts. And so if we come back over to the laptop and I wanna see what those waveforms look like, you have to set up your lab scope and, and this is a, uh, a Foxwell uh, OS 100 lab scope. It's uh, merely made by Handtech. It's not the most up-to-date. I think the software version on this is 2016, so uh, it's rather old, but it works great for doing this can stuff, and all you need is a laptop and a lab scope and some T-pins, and, and the lab scope even came with uh, the long wires, uh, the test drive wires, and the alligator clips and uh, T-pins and everything you need to do this kind of stuff. So anyway, when we're looking at our waveform, in order to capture the waveform, we're gonna to have to set our time base. I'm gonna zoom in here. Time base is at 10 microseconds. And then my voltage is set at one volt DC at one X. My trigger is set to auto for right now. And then I'm gonna zoom out and you're gonna see my waveform. Now, can, you'll notice number one over here on the left-hand side is the yellow trace, right? Number two, is the blue trace. So blue is can low, one is can high. And if you look at the voltage, so you see the dotted lines on the screen right here where the cursor is going back and forth. That one represents one volt, two volts, three volts. So I have three and a half volts. So I have two and a half to three and a half volts on that waveform. That's what I want on can high. Can low, I want one and a half to two and a half, but remember can low is a mirror image of can high and it's negative. It's negative polarity. So I've got one and a half volts and you can see it from the, the two, the dotted line represents the two, the zero point, and then I've got, well, just about, and I'm on a one volt scale, so I'm just over peaking at one, yeah, about one and a half volts if you look at the, uh, the total waveform. So this, this is what a proper CAN data packet looks like, but you can't see this with a multimeter because it's not fast enough. You gotta have a lab scope. And if you're, if you're taking your ski to a shop, that's fine. But if the shop, does, you gotta ask them, hey, do you guys have a lab scope? If they don't have a lab scope, they can't troubleshoot this properly because they can't see the network. So. Uh, when you're when you're troubleshooting, let's go back to the topography again. I'm just going to flip back over to this screen, and you're going to look at your components. So if I if I have a problem in the network and I'm back probed into the diagnostic connector here, and I'm looking at the network, and let's say my waveform looks kind of screwy, right? The the voltage is too high, the voltage is too low, or I don't have a nice square wave on the pattern. It's kind of sloped or uh, scalloped or something else that it doesn't look normal, it doesn't look like this, then what you would do is go into your, um, according to the, the guys at uh, CanDo Pro, uh, the, the two biggest problems they have with, uh, with these skis in the CAN network are the gauge, because water get, they get cracked and then the water gets in there, and the IBR module because of where it sits in the ski. It's in the back, and there's an electrical connector on it with a CAN bus signal going into it, uh, so it can talk to the other components in the network. So what, you, what I would do if I had a CAN network problem and I got a ski coming in the day uh, to help somebody out uh, on this problem on a 2013 ski 
is I'm going to disconnect the IBR and see if my network connection is restored and my waveform goes back to normal. If it does, then I know it's either the wiring between the network and the IBR, which you can check with a multimeter and check your resistance, or it's the IBR module has failed internally and can't talk to the network. So anyway, this is the way to troubleshoot a CAN network. You don't have to just load parts in the shotgun and, and shoot it at the ski and hope and roll the dice and that something fixes it. There is actually a way to troubleshoot your CAN network. Um, I'm going to post some um, links in the comments so you can get some really uh, some basic information on CAN networks and how they work. Um, and if, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in there and I will try to address those and uh, potentially make uh, another video uh, when this other ski that's not working properly comes in so we can show you what a bad waveform looks like. <laughs> okay guys, that's all for now on the CAN network stuff. Uh, when the other ski comes in, we'll try to shoot some video on that to show you what a faulty CAN network signal looks like so you can compare the two. And then uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments, we'll try to address those. And then uh, we'll see you next time.